Hi, my name is Matt Cyrus, and in this video, we're going to carry on painting the sci fi prop. We're also going to look at how we can start to create damage and dirt layers to add more life into your prop. So let's get started. Now, I've just downloaded a material from Substance Source, so I'm just going to add it. So if we go to Damage, click here. You see all these ones I added the other day. Click Open base material, shelf, import. Okay, now if I add that to there, I think, ah, so let's add a black mask and let's paint this there. Let's change the color of this. I like that, maybe not. Like that color. Let's bring I do like orange. Uh, let's get rid of the Okay. So we've got our fabric. It's cool. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, we do need wire. I think there is plastic, lots of plastic choice anyway. So, oh, no, don't do that. Okay, just control Z. Remember, if you double click on it with that selected, it's going to do that. Um, let's do plastic mat and black mask. change the color again to be like that you can also add uh, this to it as well just adding a bit of color variation in there just to just to break it up um, and then let's have a look for metal so if you type in metal it's going to break up everything with a prefix which has metal on it uh, this in add a black mask I don't like that so I'm going to change that and turn that into here like that okay so I think we've pretty much painted this uh, for the time being I'm just going to grab a plastic and grab the grainy add a black mask and change the properties of this uh, so it's a bit less thingy so 20 um, technical parameters Change this a bit more, 25. There you go. Keep that for the time being. Okay. So I've got my base. So this, I would say, is my base. Um, sorry about that, just changing my seat. Uh, so I'm going to group this together. And I'm going to press Control G, just like Photoshop. I'm going to call this base color. Now, the reason why I do that is because I'm actually going to create dirt layers and damage layers uh, groups. And the reason for this is because I don't want to destroy these layers. Because a client might say, might say to me, oh, it's a bit too, mu too much damage or it's a bit too much dirt. Um, can we go back to just clean? And if I've done if I've done the dirt on these layers, then so this is just how I work. Now, firstly, what I'm going to do is because we've still got some masking to do, so I'm going to create a new brush. So if we go over to brushes, 
and find type in square you'll see this brush here if I just create a new uh, layer like that you can see that I've got squares now the problem with this is that it's all spread out so what I want to do is I want to actually change it so I can change it in these settings here so what we can do is uh, we can add a new alpha so if I type in square so it's instead of being a rectangle it is actually squares and if I change uh, position spacing it's really getting a lot better no jitter there you go so I could actually paint a straight line there uh, okay that's fine and what I'm going to do is I always forget this bit, so just bear with me. Um, there you go. So you click on here where it says brush, create to uh, create brush preset, and I'm just going to rename this to uh, square. probably spelled that wrong I have spelled that wrong there we go I do apologize uh, and now there we go that's the one I want would help if I could spell it now with this I can actually start to paint stuff out so for example if I wanted this a different color say black just to break it up a little bit or I wanted like rubber bits here I can do so if I find here uh, okay so if I add a um, so if I press control D I can duplicate a layer and I can do that with masks as well so I can actually copy the mask and paste it into another mask uh, quite easily. I'm just going to add a black mask on there. Sorry, white. And then with the square brush, I'm going to change this to UV. Uh, okay, so the um, I'm going to mask this out by using this. Um, but for example, I just want to show you this. For example, if you accidentally rotate like this, it can get really annoying. So if you press Alt Shift, it will snap rotate it back into 90 degrees. So now when I click this here and click here, I'm holding Control Shift, left click, I can mask out straight. There you go. And I can do this for all this as well. So. Again, left click, control shift, and because I change this to UV based, um, it won't paint over. So, when you're doing this sort of thing, make sure it's set to UV, uh, not uh, the other, other way. And I can, this is really good. And this was just a brush that I made inside to make things a little bit easier go back to this size and this is the best way I've found it so using masks is uh, I find better than using like color maps to differentiate between the different um, materials um, I mean you could have each material have its own class here but then you've got to find a way of bringing that all together when you bake it out 
So I think uh, one of my old students actually showed me this method and I, I haven't used anything since. And that's just using masks to actually paint out things and materials and that sort of stuff. So it's the best way of doing it that I've found. Okay. Right, uh, let's have a look at what else we need to do. So actually on that note, what we can do is we could paint these screws. So we could use the metal, um, but to demonstrate this, I'm just gonna um, use this iron here. So I'm gonna use a basic hard brush, okay? I'm gonna find this on the UV sheets here. I'm gonna use the brackets to make them bigger and smaller, and then I'm just gonna paint on it. Okay, and we can see now that that's actually starting to come together. And it's the same with these ones. So I'm gonna grab the uh, square brush again that I made, which is named wrong. I know I am so sorry about that. For any uh, people out there, like you spelt it wrong. I said, yeah, I know. I could change it. Do you know what? Let's change it. People are going to be shouting at me. Did I spell it right? Yeah, there we go. For all those shouting at me in chat. Um, oh, that was a lot. Okay. And it works. Anything on the top layer isn't going to come through here. We can change the blending modes as well which you can't see on the screen at the moment for some reason, but you can change them to like just Photoshop. So if you're used to using Photoshop, it's exactly the same. We can change the opacity on this sort of stuff as well, which we will do more when it's the dirt. Um, the only thing I would love to see is like a marquee tool. That'd be awesome. Like if you could do it like in Photoshop where you have got like a marquee tool around and then do a fill that'd be awesome if you could do that in this maybe something that they're looking at maybe not i don't know um and i this is my best part i love painting now especially using substance painter uh, when i learned it was all we all all we did was we did it through photoshop um and then now with substance painter it's so much easier okay so it's coming together I'm probably not going to paint the rest of this uh, you get the drift with using masks and creating your own brushes as well uh, remember if you want to change your own brush you can do so I could create my own brush and then right click here and create brush preset once you untick it and then go back it will go back to its original preset so make sure you save it if you don't you'll have to keep doing it every single time I'm talking from experience on this one <laughs> okay um, I think that's it really. Um, what else? Let's move on to the um, actually painting some scratches and stuff into this. Okay. Now I'm gonna start to have a bit more fun with this. So I've done my base layers, that sort of stuff. So now I want to actually start to create some kind of scratches and dirt and that sort of stuff build up because it's it's in a sci-fi environment. It would have been banged on the side of the walls, that sort of stuff. So uh, what we need to do is um, start to actually build up these scratches. Now there is a point where it can go a bit overkill, uh, but it all depends on the environment that it's been used in. And this is why it's important to know what environment your object or prop is gonna be, be used in. If it's gonna be industrial, is it gonna be like kind of high tech where it's, very white and clean all depends on and this will influence your dirt will influence your wear and tear it will influence your damage so to begin with I'm gonna create some scratches for the actual uh, green bits so the material uh, the military green um, on here so if I grab um, let's have a look at the materials let's grab a metal um, steel rough will do for this gonna create a black mask 
and I'm just going to change this to say 15, so some of the detail. Go back to the mask, and I'm actually going to add something different this time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a generator. Now, a lot of people fall into the mistake of just adding a generator and just leaving it there, um, and that's not what you should do. So if we, but you can use generators to get a good start on the damage and then start to paint your own damage in there. All right, so I'm going to add a generator. I'm going to pick the metal edge wear one. Okay, and as you can see already, it started to give me a really good baseline to work with. Um, and I can change like, the wear level. Now, one thing I will say. come back to that in a minute okay so let's carry on changing this ah yeah ignore me I'll come back and fix that in a minute I'll show you how to fix it because some of this bits I don't want um, on here because this is just for metal so this rubber stuff and that yeah that's not what I want and because it's over the top that that's why but we'll paint that out in a minute so we can change uh, the wear level contrast so we get some more bigger um, grunge amount that sort of stuff and all I'm looking at at the moment is the actual metal bits not the not this stuff because this shouldn't be here now what we can do is we can add a paint level okay and on this paint level I can mask out what shouldn't be on this uh, where so all this stuff yeah, it's rubber it shouldn't be there um, same with that same with that we can change this as well it's just because it's over the top of it that's why it's going to pick everything up that's what stumped me on the plastic I was like why is it ah it's because it's over the top of everything that's why okay so there's that let's play around with I think that's good um, again let's just And then I would have to go in and just manually do that anyway um, with it. So let's um, have a look at this now. So with the paint as well, what I can do is I can actually start to then paint in scratches as well. So if I go over to the brushes and look at uh, damage, no, dirt. There is dirt, there is scratch brushes as well. Uh, let's just add a new uh, paint. If I select the brush again, so that's what I was doing wrong there, and I can paint on there, I can start to paint my own scratches in. So for example, if 
and I can play around with different brushes so for example this is a really good brush for if you have got screws Same it up here I can properly it's all about going around and experimenting with this these brushes uh, we can and I mean I might want to actually bring the roughness value of this down a little bit uh, I'll bring it up And normally where there's exposed steel, there's normally rust as well. So what we can do is, if we find the rust material, put that underneath. And if we copy now this mask and paste, see how we get the rust through I mean we could let's, um, yeah I mean you can take that away as well like you wouldn't necessarily and we can change this as well because we're gonna get uh, brushes, brushes, brushes. Like, you could get real paint there. Or make sure you're on the paint layer. And that's where you start to get this kind of, like, make sure you're on the paint. Yeah, this like kind of rusty feel to it, and you can take this as far as you want. Like um, you can paint as it depends on the environment. Like I said, um, you normally get rust quite around screws and that sort of stuff. Probably a bit too extreme. And we can change how much we see of that as well. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Um, just make sure you're in the paint layer, and that will paint it through. And we can change the um, flow as well. On there. And the best thing that's um, and you can add to this as well so if we wanted to add another generator say um, actually let's get rid of that it's a bit overkill uh, one thing I am going to do though is I'm actually going to put a new paint layer and I'm gonna show you the particle brushes. Uh, where are you, particles, there we go. These are brilliant. So you want it to leak. You can actually have leaking. Like it's watermarked on the leak. Same with the rust as well. The reason why I just added a new paint layer is just so it's easily got rid of. Um, and for example, you can change the size of it, uh, the flow. There you go. Properly damage this. Hmm. 
Um, there's other stuff as well. There's uh... oh, uh, that's a bad thing. Never used that before. Laser impacts, um, sandstorm, which never works for me. Ah, right, there we go. Um, lots of things that we can do particle brushes with and if you don't like it you can just get rid of the paint layer so I'm not damaging this layer I've got it all on a mask basically same with up here um, so that is uh, damage I can't spell today there we go now the next thing I'm gonna do is dirt because there's always a dirt layer so let's um, is there a, I'm sure there's, hmm, is that a smart material? That is a smart material, let's use that. Okay, <laughs> bit extreme, but we'll fix that out in a minute. So this is just the mask editor for this. Actually, do you know what? Let's get rid of that. I'll show you how to do it. So let's create a <coughs> fill layer and let's just get a dirt color. So something like that. Okay, I'm gonna call this dirt. And we're gonna just create a um, generator. And we're gonna use the dirt generator I'm um, just going to get rid of the normal and the height. Um, no, actually. Black mask. Then do the generator. I do apologize. Okay. You can change the color with this as well. There we go. Let's get rid of the height and normal. Let's go back to this. And again, you're probably going to have to paint this out. Because it's way too dirty. <laughs> so we'll add a paint. Right, go to brushes. Start to now probably what you want to do is bring the flow and this down and start to layer it. And just think of where the dirt will would have been and something like this. Now you can probably hear I'm using a mouse. Um, Highly recommend using a tablet for this. And I can change the opacity on this as well. And I can even grab a dirt brush and start to paint it out so it's more natural. Because I turned the opacity down as well, I can really start to actually control the dirt. Now, another good thing is if I do like um, another fill layer, black mask, and add a um, uh, what's it? Let's change the color of this. mass selected I'm just going to do a particle you think what is going on we can change this and let's change the color a bit more 
the grey. Yeah, probably just like that. Um, add a paint. Um, go to brushes and just start to paint this out slightly. start to get some really nice dirt effects quite simple and there you go so it's already started to look like it's worn and damaged and that sort of stuff so yeah so a bit with more time or like TLC you can really start to get some really nice detail in your texture for for your models and actually bring them alive now the last thing we need to do is we need to export these textures so to do that, I'm going to go to uh, File, Export Textures. Now earlier on I showed you how to build your own configuration. But for this one, I'm going to um, export uh, this here. Now I do need the normal map, so I'm just going to a new one, copy this and call this. Um, normal. I'm just going to bring DirectX one in. There we go from RGB, um, and that's saved now. So I'm going to use this one. Now, the difference in this one is that the PSM you've got um, AO going to red. You've got roughness going to green and metallic going to blue, and it's just how you set up the materials. So let's export this. Okay, select folder, make sure it's target. Turn these off. Now this is where you could downscale these, but I'm going to keep them there. Okay. So this has been um, an introduction to Substance Painter and just kind of my workflow on how I use the layer systems to build up damage and dirt. I hope you've enjoyed this video series and so this has been an introduction to Substance Painter. Um, I wanted to show you guys how I use these layers um, to build up damage and dirt and that sort of stuff and just going to group these together so they're all together and yeah um, I am going to do a video series on using Unreal Engine 4 to render props like this inside of it so do check out the channel uh, regularly for that one. Thank you for watching this uh, series on thank you for watching this series on thank you for watching this series on creating a character prop um, using Maya, Quixel Suite, X Normals, and Substance Painter. It's been a long one, but we hopefully you guys have can take away some of the bits that I use on my processes when I create these um, props. Um, if you did like this video, we do have a Patreon, which is the link is in the description below. Also, uh, we release videos every Thursday, um, whether that's programming or art. Uh, so do hit the notification bell uh, if you're a subscriber and if you're not a subscriber and you did like them leave us a like subscribe to our channel and then i'll see you guys in the next set of videos